Hi, my name's Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. You may have caught my daughter and I live. We just did a live on Facebook and on YouTube showing you the things that we got in our first order. We both have second orders on the way from the latest edition. It's upcoming. It's the holiday catalog formerly known as the holiday catalog. It's switching its name to the August, December catalog. That's a mouthful and it will take me probably a year <laughs> to make the switch over to the new name. So those of you who have placed an order with me since the beginning of the month from July 1st until today, until I get over to my computer um, and print the mailing labels, my first mailing of these will go out today. And then probably next Monday will be when I get all of the rest of you. So if you've purchased from me from April 1st until now, then you, you will all be getting one. I have them all. I just don't have the time. I have all the catalog. I don't have the time. So I'm doing a priority mailing um, for all of you that have ordered in July. And then the rest of you will all get caught up. I have so much to do. And a lot of it's stamp related. All of it, in fact, is stamp related. Um, so... I just did a special thing and that will get some of you out of the way and then the rest of you, I will get to it. But it just takes so long to do all the mailing labels and get them all stuffed and get them all ready. So I, but I know some of you are super eager, so I gave you the chance. So there is a slight chance that if you get your order in still on Monday, that they'll go out. Um, I'm gonna print the labels and get them in the mail. Um, I'll drive them up to the post office and slip them in the box, maybe hopefully before five, so they get that last um, pickup before then. So unboxing is there. You can see all the stuff we got first go around. My try it class for this is coming. I have so many of you that keep asking. It's coming. That's one of the things I'm going to work on this week. I'm pretty sure it's going to be nine cards. I needed to have this in my hand to kind of see it. And then if you want to go over, this was my daughter's card that she did on our live unboxing. And then the one I did is the one I'm going to show you now. So, because they've switched the name of the catalog from holiday to August to December, it's a larger catalog. There's more in it that's not just Halloween, fall, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then that smidge of Valentine's that's always been in there. There's more things just like this one that are kind of year-round, um, just fun sets. This one's super fun. She's going to do some stuff with that. And then the one that I'm going to show you right away when I saw it, I knew I had to have it called Gnome for the Holidays, but I didn't want to wait for Christmas. I am going to have a Christmas in July week, the week of July 25th. So that week, all of my stuff will be Christmas, straight up Christmas, all from this catalog. Um, but this one I wanted to stamp with, and I'm not doing Christmas until my Christmas in July. It's like 100 degrees outside. I'm not doing Christmas just yet. I, uh, even in Australia when it was Christmas, it wasn't 100 degrees. I'm not doing Christmas yet, but I wanted to use this. So let me show you how I did it. So hang on. I'll edit this part out so you don't have to watch me switch it. Put my camera down. So we've got Gnome for the holidays. And you can see that it has, um, like they're definitely Christmas. He's got snowflakes on his hat. She's got a Christmas tree on her head. He's got ho um, holly and an ornament. And then they've got Christmas lights on there on the house. I didn't want mine to be that. There is one that says you're a friend like Gnome Other, but I wanted to use the one that says there's no place like Gnome um, for the Christmas season because my camera's still not great. I have my snazzy dazzy thing I can use on my lives and I haven't figured out how to get because it just for straight up taping. There's too many things I'm always learning. I have um, updated all of my like things like my YouTube thumbnails and my Facebook thumbnails and my logos all that's been updated so I feel a little bit fresher on that end so let let me show you how you can use this now and all year round we're gonna, it's gonna take a little bit of creativity but you know that's what we do right so I'm gonna stamp just with some black memento this is on shimmery white cardstock I'm gonna use a bunch of stuff from the new catalog so we have his little house, his little Keebler elf house. When we went to Iceland, I fell in love with the gnomes. I always liked them, but they were everywhere there. Okay, and then stamp him. 
And then I have this little piece that has the words on it. I'm gonna wait till I have some scrap. I'm gonna set him aside to dry. And while, because it's super, super humid here, um, it's gonna just take this all a second longer to dry. So I'm going to use these. They're part of a bundle, but whenever we do our order, I let my daughter pick some stuff overnight and then she gets my stuff on her slow boat from China order because she can't afford the overnight charges. So we just do the stuff that I, because I can't stamp with everything overnight. So these are hers and she didn't want the whole bundle. They're designed to be used as bag toppers. Eventually I will get the whole thing, but I haven't got them yet. So when she got here this morning, I said, I used your new dies and she was a little bit aghast. But you know, you have your mom get your stuff for you and it's sitting at your mom's house and they're new. I'm like, well, yeah, I just wanted to use them. So they're designed to be as bag, uh, bag toppers. So they do have like a little foldy bit in them, but they're great stitch label dies. I'm gonna switch the colors that I'm using on this card that, from my original. So I'm gonna put this one through the Misty Moonlight. Of course, they cut fabulously because they are the new Stampin' Up! ones. Just one, one pass through. So we've got that. And then you get this piece if you want to use a frame piece. And we've got this. I just have to make sure she gets them all back. She's coming tomorrow to get them. Because after I made the card, she's like, well, I guess it's okay that you use them. And I'm like, well, I need to use them again because they haven't filmed with them. So let's do this little piece here. And then you can see it fits just perfect. But that little bit here is the part that you can fold it and put it over the dies, the bag. And then there's some new really print, pretty printed bags. They're more gift size. And I'm going to use these two little sprigs. So if you have other kind of label dot, any of our label dies, you could use those and then you could use the spring punch for this. But I wanted his little sprigs to be shimmery because you know, he's a gnome and he lives in gnome land and everything there is sparkly. So then we have all these and it's just giving all this a little bit longer to dry. And they're stuck. Are they both stuck inside there? Yeah. And then, just to go with the his house feeling, I am going to use the this embossing folder. Mine's really old, so I don't need the blue plate. It'll just go with the tree trunk feeling of his house. And this is the cinnamon, so another new in color, because I haven't really used our new in color blends yet, and that's how I'm gonna color him, so it was a perfect opportunity. So, and then the card itself is going to be just jade, because again, I have new in color markers that I haven't used. So let's do that. So we're gonna have it layered like this. My other one was for Coco Rose. So we can see which one we like better. I didn't get to grab a piece of scrap. I need some scrap paper. Okay, so now when you color this, this is gonna just be straight up coloring. So I will um, color it and fast forward that part of the video so you don't have to watch. Thought I was going to put those out, but they're falling right out. And the two little sprigs. There's also a little, um, corner pattern in this set that I thought about using. But when it was all said and done and it was time for us to go live, I just didn't use it. So let's do him so you can see how to get him from going as a Christmas um, gnome to a not a Christmas gnome. So he barely has any face because you know his nose and his hat cover it all up. So get his face there first so you make sure that you get it colored. So I just have a little bit of petal pink. He does have a nose and his tiny little hands. Because if you don't get that colored, it'd be easy to let his hat run right onto his nose. And then you need a dark color um, to, co to cover up the snowflakes. You could do some omitting, 
but I thought it would be just easier to cover it up. So the, the dots are fine. It's really the snowflakes that we want to lose. So I took my light midnight and just my brush tip and this will run because it's dark color and you're going to put a little bit more than you might otherwise because you're trying to cover something up. So just take the light and kind of do a a trace around, but don't go all the way to the corners. Let it bleed out to the corners. And then right here in the middle, there's nothing. So I'm barely going to touch. I'm going to let that do the bleeding and get some shading there for us. And then I'm going to let that sit just for a minute because this these colors do bleed in that small of an area. And let's do his clothes because again, hard to see. I want a tiny bit of shading as much as I can get on what tiny little bit of clothes he has. So just a dab of dark pumpkin just on the sides, just enough so there'll be a little bit of shading. And just use your bullet tip, because if you use your brush tip, there's gonna to be too much color. And then just color in so one little strip of clothing that goes down behind his beard. And then just because you have that tiny little strip of dark, it gives it just a little bit of shading. And then over here, we're gonna do his um, boots in Poppy. So again, just start with your dark. And just add a tiny bit of dark. Because you're working with such a small area, you don't want it to bleed. And you most certainly don't want it to bleed into his beard. So you're kind of more than coloring, you're dabbing on color. And then let's go back up here and fix his hat. So we have that light. So now you're gonna take the dark and again, take your bullet tip and use it to cover up the snowflakes. So you're kind of making dots, not circle dots, more blob of color dots. Again, don't get close to the edge. Let it bleed out to the edge. And at the end, you can kind of fill out to the edge if wherever it didn't reach. So now you've got that. So there we are with those. And I'm gonna let this sit again while I color this in. So I'm gonna color this in and then I will um, be back and I'll just tell you how I did this after it's colored. Okay, so you can see what I've done with this is it's mostly just alternating dark and light cinnamon. And then I have some dark mango for the inside of the house. This is dark and light crumb cake on the door. And then dark and light jade for the grass and the leaves. Then this is dark suede that I've done the stones in. Then I'm gonna take and you see this part. This is my light soft suede, and I'm gonna take the brush tip. Everything else I've used my bullet tips. I mostly use bullet tips. When I color, I'm gonna add just a little bit of grass or ground, because I don't want him floating in air. I've done that with the brush tip. Then I'm gonna go back with my light crumb cake, and I'm gonna take my um, brush tip again. And just kind of give it some blending and then I'm going to switch to my bullet tip and I also want you to notice while I'm doing this that my lights up there I have colored they overlap the sections of tree so wherever they were the most on a color if they were darker light I could just color them so they were the same color as the tree I didn't want them to be left white because when we go to cover them up in a minute you want them to kind of blend into the tree so they're not noticed that there's something stamped back there. And then the little knobs that are holding the lights on, I colored those in black. So there we have that. So now he's not gonna be floating in here. Now we have these two little pieces of sprig. I'm gonna do one of them in light jade and one in dark. And again, use your brush tip for this and literally just brush it on. This is a great tip for anytime you don't have a color of cardstock and you want to dye in it because by the time you paint that or color it, it looks just like you did it out of the cardstock. But the nice thing is, is we don't have light and dark colors of cardstock, but now I'll have two sprigs in the same color, but coordinating. 
So now I've got those. And you can see the reason I'm doing this on the scrap paper is that it definitely bleeds through, especially that midnight. As you can see where I told you it would bleed, see that dark right here? If you put too much of that on that hat, it's gonna bleed right off. So now let's go back now that that's all dried. I'm gonna go back to my light. This is my light one. And I'm gonna use my bullet tip again. I'm gonna go ahead now and fill in everywhere. But again, barely brush it because it's a dark color and it will bleed right outside that hat and you don't want that to happen. This will be a great color on some big patterns, but on this little one, you just don't want it. Less is much better. So there we go. So now it's got a little, because we did it in sections, I was able to keep some shading. Um, one more little thing over the top of the snowflakes. If you did it all at once, then it would just bleed. I wish there was a way I could take a picture of the this before we finish with it. So you can see the snowflakes are there, but you'd have to look really hard. And we're going to do one more step to make those disappear. But we're almost done. So let's move these out of the way. I'm just need to fussy cut him out real fast because this is just a stamp set. It doesn't come with anything special. Okay, so I've got everything, but I want to show you what to do with this bell. Don't hack the whole thing off because you want the bow on top, but then don't hack the whole bell off either because you need something to glue the sequin on in a second. So if you just leave the bow, there's not going to be anything left. So the bell has a nice little stripe in the middle of it. It might be an ornament. I don't know. Now I just cut No, it's a bell. So just from that middle bit where the stripe is, just leave that little top section on. And that's just enough then to put some adhesive on. Okay, so now let's just stick all this together. We're almost done. So we have a little bit. Here we go. I'm gonna use my stamp and seal. I don't see my plus. Sometimes with this stuff, I like to use the plus, but let's put it here. Stick this on first. Just in the middle. And then I'm going to stick this over to one edge. And then this is going to go just right in the middle. It, they layer perfectly, so just layer it right where it goes. And my other one, I said I used the Rococo Rose, so we'll be able to see which one we liked best. And you'll see why I, I used it in a second when I stick the sequins on. And then let's pop him up with some dimensionals. Do not need four, he's not that big. They all came off at once. We're gonna do the rest of the work on him. I did it earlier before I glued him on. So if you were doing it at home, you could do this next step second, but I want, don't wanna touch him while he's wet because I'm gonna put some stuff on the sequins and things on him. So let's stick him here and then just take Here's a good tip for you. Whenever you need to adhesive little things like this, just use, if you have some dimensionals that have some empty, then they make a great resist. So just put your thing on there. So we want it to look like he's holding these. So just stick them on there. There's gonna be a little bit of overhang, but that's okay. Because we're also gonna add some ribbon. So that little bit of adhesive that's right there, we're gonna take, this is from the Forever Green Reef, the fern. It's the little cord. And because I needed something tiny, cause he's tiny, you don't want it, him to hold a giant ribbon. And when he has those teensy tiny little hands. So tie as little of a bow as possible.
So you have the bow, and once you have the bow tied, then just kind of pull these down and then kind of unravel some of it. That gives it a little bit more wispy of a look. And then you just want the ends to be super short too. And then a little bit of extra. Seal is perfect to just grab that because it's a tiny little bit. Just cut that off. And then we have a couple more extra steps. Take your um, fine tip glue and just add a little dot to each of your lights. So this is easy because you know exactly where you want to put it. And then to that little tip right there of your bow, bell. And look how fabulous these are. These are our sequins that no longer have holes because you don't need a hole when you're just gluing them on the card. Look how fabulous they are. But those just fabulous. So I'm grab my take my pick tool. Always make sure if you're gonna use this in that you just pull that dried up bit off and then it works better. So I'm going to get some green. There's different shapes. Of course, the first one I pick up is a translucent one. And then just knock them on to your glue bits. And they all cover up those things just fine. And now we have some summer, some summer baubles instead of Christmas bells. There's all different shapes. I'm going for mostly the round ones on this. Let's give him a big, whoops, I dropped it. A big green bobble. If you don't have a take your pick tool with this little tip, then you're missing out because it just makes picking these things up so much easier. So now we've got his little house lights and they can be whichever color. It reminds me as a child, we used to camp a lot. As an adult, I do not camp a lot, but we had the little ice cream cones that hung on our camper van. Well, our pop up. So then the last step that we're gonna do, I am not a fan of leaving something when I've colored everything in and leaving part of it blank. And then for where those snowflakes are starting to show through, I'm going to take both of our colors of shimmer paint. So let's start with our white. This is the frost white shimmer paint. And then this is an empty Stella. So just work with what's in the lid and just go in between the lines. You don't wanna cover up the stamping part but this way it's not gonna look like his beard is just missing. You don't have to do all of it, but just give his whiskers a little bit of color so they don't look like you just forgot about them. It doesn't look as bad because it's on shimmer paper, so it doesn't look totally empty, but this just kind of gives him a little bit more shimmer. So there that is. And then for his hat, because you know he is a, a gnome and he's sparkly and he lives in gnome land. So we have those illusions of the, the snowflake dots. Just gonna give him one more little dot cover up. And then this for sure, the snowflakes have totally disappeared. So there's no snowflakes. Now we have gold polka dots on our hat. The first time I kind of just brushed them and I've also considered putting this piece through, I should have, the second piece through the embossing folder as well. I'm not a huge fan of flat paper because I'm spoiled. And then let's just get his saying. Is this a big enough piece of scrap? There we go. And you know, this is a Christmas thing, but this one in particular is super easy to take care of that with. So let's just stamp. There's no place like gnome for the Christmas season, but you know, it's a hundred degrees outside. So it could be an Australian or a Kiwi Christmas. 
but it is not Christmas time anywhere in the world. And I want to send my gnome card on. So I'm just going to take, there's no place like gnome and get rid of the Christmas part. And a little bit of adhesive. and add it to my card. And there we are done. Here's my other one that has it on the Rococo Rose. Both are equally as cute. I think I like the blue a little bit better. It pulls his hat in. I was trying to pull the lights in, but it just made a little bit too light of a card. So there you go. If you need a copy of the catalog, all you have to do is place an order on my website um, and then I'll know that you need one. That way I know you don't already have another demonstrator. I have a bunch of specials this month as well. You can get a free mini paper trimmer from me. Just go to my website and find out all the details and watch for my try it class for this next catalog. It was a super duper hit. Um, and last time I had to cut it off because of back orders on the hoops. I'm hoping this time that none of the things that I picked to use for it will be on back order um, due to COVID because you know there's no place like Gnome. <laughs> um, so, but you will want to get signed up for that as soon as I offer it, just on the off chance that something goes wrong. So everybody have a great day. I can't wait to, I, I am torn whether or not to go back to the annual catalog or to do one of these. I think I might do an every other until my um, Christmas in July class comes around. But there you go. Another new card from another new catalog. Everybody have a great day. Bye.